This is TNT News. From every corner in Ladywood, we're bringing you the latest news. This is Tonight in Ladywood. Hello and welcome to TNT News. I'm Nikisha Beswick. And I'm Hannah Rowley. First tonight, Birmingham celebrated Armed Forces Day. It was a moving but enjoyable parade in Centenary Square which was led by the new Lord Mayor Councillor, Anita Ward. Last month, this man passed away in Australia aged 110. Claude Scholes was the last living link to World War I, but the Hall of Memory can still give us an idea of what went on in that terrible war. In Birmingham, 150,000 people volunteered to fight for their country. 12,320 were killed and 35,000 came back either mentally or physically disabled. Regular viewers will know that we are very interested in World War I and I was lucky enough to be able to lay a wreath at the Menin Gate in Ypres to remember those Ladywood people who were sadly killed. So that was World War I, now here's a story from World War II with Hannah. Now a remarkable story of a Ladywood man, Ron Needle, who was a rear gunner in a Lancaster bomber in World War II. He has an extraordinary tale to tell about what happened to him in 1945. Uh, it was about ten past eight at night when we crashed into this forest. And uh, again it's in the book, but uh, we'd actually turned upside down it over Munich. Uh, and because we needed being hit by one of our own Lancaster bombers. But again the pilot managed to write the plane. But in the melee, they did, uh, ditched the uh, bum hatch the, and uh, cold icy air was coming in and then suddenly I remember, I do remember being thrown forward and then I lost unconscious, I was lost in my consciousness for a number of hours and when I came to, I was, my parachute harness had caught on the fuselage and pulled me back and that had actually saved my life. Well. I, all I could see was the, uh, the the shell of the aircraft, no wings on, trees knocked down, on fire, the plane was still on fire in bits, but but I crawled away far enough from the plane. I was in, never in any danger of being burnt. Um, I'd got little burn marks on my hands and that, but uh, I was lucky I was at the back end of the plane. Uh, and it was all the front where all the petrol was that uh, you know the petrol had obviously broke off from the tanks and set fire to the fuddies but I was fortunate enough to to be unconscious and when I came to uh, you know most of the fires were out mm -hmm. although the ammunition was exploding because inside there is an ammunition rack that feeds into the rear turret you know for me to use the guns but they, they were popping away on fire. But I didn't notice that so much. Uh, it, it was a matter of, you know, I'd got to get out of the aircraft and I was very lucky to do that. Mm. And uh, I crawled out into the snow thinking I was the only one alive because I'd been unconscious for a long time. And then I heard bells ringing from a church and I started to crawl out in the direction of these sounds of the bells ringing. And then, uh, I lay by, a, I got by a tree and I lay by the tree and kept shouting help, help and then looking across there was a lot of, I saw some French people coming to me yeah, and they took my flying boot off and gave me a drink and looked after me, nursed me till an ambulance came <coughs> and then I learned that Harry 
he, he, the wireless operator, was the other one, the only other one that was saved. He was sitting by what they call the Astrodome, that's a Perspex Astrodome that he used to look out and take readings from the stars. And actually that Perspex dome melted onto him, it melted onto him and he crawled up there onto the wings and the wings had by this time, you know, broken off and he fell to the ground and he went wandering about into the village and eventually came to a little hut where they kept sheep and the, and the sheep was in there and then he went in there uh, with the sheep to keep warm and eventually a, a farmer came with a pitchfork and thought he was a German and uh, but then they realised he, he was English and uh, they looked after him. 43 years afterwards my brother-in-law said, come on Ram, we'll go and find this village where you crashed. I knew that we were crashed at a place called Maligny Le Grand, but that's English. So I was asking uh, the gendarme uh, in French, uh, Maligny Le Grand, and they were just going, no, no. So uh, we eventually got to this village, so we knocked on the door of a house and said to a young lady who came, can you speak English? And she said, a little. And then a few minutes later, a tractor comes up with Andre on it. So what have we got here, Ron? Well, that is a K-tin that was made by Andre, the man who saved my life, the bell ringer. And he actually made this K-tin from the plane that was crashed in the forest. The villagers went and collected all the aluminium they could and made certain things. So it was, you know, some of the wreckage was made good for them. So Ron, could you tell us about this um, plaque here? Yes, that's a, he's a treasure of mine. That plaque was made by Andre's brother-in-law. He's an exact copy of the uh, church whose bells helped to save my life. <laughs>
there was a demonstration to show how much communication has changed over the years. The North Summerford Residents Association have had their annual horticultural competition, which featured a garden event. Naturally, TNT was there. It's Bobby Thompson, <laughs> and then there's Mr. Ken Whitaker, Mr. Robin Russell. And thank you for looking after your gardens and your neighbourhood, because that's what I think it's really about uh, a pride in your, your own homes, your own gardens and grounds, and your own streets and neighbourhood. Well, this is the big part now. We've officially got first, second, and third. And the winner is. Coplo Terrace. Coplo Terrace. Can a young lady come up and take it off? Not an old lady, not a young lady. A young lady. It's my turn. Single. It's my turn. <laughs> completely different. Why not do something out of the ordinary this summer holidays? Why not go roller skating? How about this for roller skating with a difference? As Norman found on the streets of Belgium's capital, Brussels. The event will promote fitness and also energy saving. Why travel to work in the car or in the bus if you can rollerblade and have more fun? Apparently that, that's the message anyway. Hundreds upon hundreds of people have turned up. Motorists are not happy here because the road is blocked off to allow the skaters to go by. So there we are then, that's the event. I wondered if you think something like this could be organised for Birmingham. Well, we're waiting for them to come back. I can either hire a bike and go and catch up with them or go and have a drink. And now the first in a new series, TNT Goes Up Your Street. The origins of street names in Ladywood. This is my street, Osler Street. It's named after this man, Abraham Follett Osler. His dad Thomas, same name as me, owned the glassworks. Here in Freeth Street. He made glass chandeliers like these. His most famous work was a big glass fountain that Queen Victoria saw at an exhibition in 1851. There was a pub here called the Glass Blower's Arms. Next door is Clark Street, named after his wife, Mary Clark. This is what Osler Street used to look like in the 1960s before they built my house. That's it from us. So good night and thanks for watching. Have a great summer. See you in September. And don't forget to keep up with TNT on our website, tntnews.co.uk. Good night.